Hi, welcome back to Make Stuff Nation. This is part three of how to build a wooden snipe. In parts one and two, we lofted out the design full scale and built the frames for the boat. Today in part three, we're gonna be building the stem, transom, and setting up the jig for construction. Alan, are you ready to get started? What about you, Vic? Look alive, let's get to work. To start building the stem and transom, we're gonna to need to make plywood patterns from the design layouts. We'll pick up those patterns using the same method we used to make the frames of the boat by transferring the lines from the design to the patterns with nails. After roughing out the patterns with the bandsaw, I cleaned them up with the power sander and a hand plane. I've now brought them back inside to compare them against the plans to make sure they're accurate. The stem is a good fit and spot on with the line. The half pattern for the transom is also right on. It also fits nicely with the frames that will be attached to the transom board. Next, I'll be tracing the transom pattern onto the 3 quarter inch marine plywood for the transom board, and I'll start milling and laminating up the material to cut out the stem. I'm out here in the shop this morning working on the stem. There are three ways that we can build the stem. The first way is to find a curved branch or piece of wood that matches the profile of the stem and cut it out of that. The second is to laminate thin strips of wood to the curve of the stem to get the right profile. And lastly, we can laminate thicker boards into a rough blank and then cut the stem from that. Because I don't have a piece that's curved already in the shape of the stem, and I don't really wanna take the time to laminate really thin strips, I'm gonna use the third option, and glue up some blocks of cypress to cut out the stem. The stem blank is gonna be made from four layers of three quarter inch thick cypress. I'm gonna alternate layers, one layer consisting of three pieces and the other layer consisting of two pieces. This will prevent the joints from overlapping for maximum strength. To determine where these joints are gonna be, I'm laying out some six inch plywood stock and then I'm going to line it up and mark the joints and then cut out those patterns. These are my templates for the two different types of layers. You can see this layer will have one joint and this layer will have two joints and that they're offset. Now I'm just gonna use a saw to cut on those lines. Then I'll be able to take the templates apart and use those to mark out my cypress stock to start laminating the stem blank. Here are the completed patterns for the stem blank. Using these patterns, I can get an accurate number of pieces as well as the dimensions to start milling up the lumber. To make the four alternating layers to get the three inches of thickness for the stem, I will need to cut two pieces for each pattern template. I've milled and rough cut all the cypress to length, matched them up with the patterns, and now I'm ready to cut the angles on the ends. Once I've cut the angles, we'll move straight on to epoxying them together.
treats the following day, the epoxy is cured and I've removed all the clamp. My next step is to cut off all these alignment pins that I added just to keep the parts in place while I epoxied and clamped it together. They won't be part of the final stem. They are actually outside of where I'll be tracing and cutting the pattern. So let's get to it. Alan, why aren't you lying on your bed? Why are you lying on the concrete? I've completed cutting the stem out of the stem blank. I roughed it out on the bandsaw and then cleaned it up on the power sander. And then this notch is where the keel batten notches into the stem. I had to clean that up with a rabbit plane, a block plane, and a chisel. And then this is the top of the stem. This is going to be the outside of the deck planking, uh, so the top of the boat. And this is where the stem cap is going to notch in underneath that. This flat surface up front here is in line with the number zero datum or station. And that's where I'm gonna attach it to the jig. This is my 900 millimeter reference line, which I also have marked on all the frames that I made. Just like everything else I've made so far, I've brought it back into the house to check against the plans. Everything's to line up and looks to be a perfect fit right now. I honestly couldn't be happier. I was really worried about this piece coming out correctly because this is where some of the tightest tolerances on the boat exist but I am exactly on the line. So super happy. What do you think, Alan? Is it a success? Victor, what do you think? Do you approve of our work so far? Well, what next, Alan? Should we build the transom? Or do you all just want lunch? I think that's a good call. What I have here is a sheet of three quarter inch Maranti Mahogany Marine Plywood. I'll be using this to make the transom for the boat. I've got my pattern all set, so I'm gonna trace it out and then we'll cut it out with the circular saw. From there, we'll take it into the shop and fine tune it with the sander and hand planes. Something's not exactly square and lining up right with my pattern. I figured out what was incorrect and what wasn't lining up with my transom pattern. So the keel width at the transom is supposed to be 51 millimeters, which I drew out correctly on the plan view. But when I projected the transom out, I accidentally measured this distance, which is, again, supposed to be 51 millimeters. I marked it out as 55 millimeters, which throws off the bottom slope of the transom. Fortunately, I checked the rest of the lines on the transom and they're correct. So what I'm gonna have to do is basically bring this corner in five millimeters, redraw this line and adjust my pattern. I have to make some minor adjustments to the bottom frames, uh, but luckily I hadn't cut out the transom from the plywood yet. After a quick run out to the shop, I've got my template for the transom corrected. It's hard to see here, but I've sanded it down to the corrected line for the bottom and then also the keel width is corrected. The thing that tipped me off that something wasn't right was when I flipped over the pattern tracing out the transom, it wasn't lining up and I discovered it wasn't lining up because this corner here was not square. The keel here should be square to the center line. So while I was out fixing the slope of the bottom here, I also corrected that. This corner is now square, so I'm ready to go to trace out the transom on plywood. I've gone ahead and erased the lines that I drew previously, and now I'm ready to retrace the transom. There we go, that looks good. Yeah, it's only uh, it's about 96 degrees here in Mississippi today and probably about just as much humidity. It's brutal. Let's rough this out and get it back to the shop. To cut this, I'm going to use my circular saw 
And I actually have this three quarter inch plywood on top of another sheet of plywood and a piece of cardboard. So I'm gonna set my blade depth so it's just deep enough to go through this plywood for the transom, but not deep enough to go through the cardboard or the other plywood, and that'll keep it from hitting the floor. I've also got a 140 tooth special blade for cutting plywood on here. Hopefully that'll prevent too much tear out. There we go, that's the rough cut of the transom. We'll get back into the air conditioning of the shop and finish it with a power sander and some hand planes. This is the completed transom board. The next step in its construction will be mounting the frames to the inside of it. The last frame piece that I need to make is the curved piece that goes underneath the deck work at the top of the transom. I used my templates inside to draw the curve. Now I'm gonna rough it out on the bandsaw, finish it on the power sander. I've got the deck frame for the transom complete. For the joinery on the ends of the deck frame, I'll cut those once I get the bottom frame and the side frames in place. The epoxy on the transom assembly is cured overnight. It appears to have cured nice and hard. I'm getting a little better about doing a clean epoxy job, but there was still some squeeze out in places and some other spots where I dripped epoxy. So I used a block plane to clean that up. I also trimmed a little piece of wood. I had a mismatch between the ends of the bottom frames here. So I used a half inch router bit to clean that spot out and then cut a piece of wood a half inch wide and epoxied it in place. So I'm pretty happy with that fix. It's not structural, it's just a cosmetic thing. And then obviously this entire assembly will be get sanded before the final finish of the boat. The next thing I need to do is mill the keel batten chine logs and shear clamps. I need to do this before I set up the jig because the jig is gonna take up so much space in my shop, I'm not gonna have very much room to mill up large pieces of lumber once it's in place. The keel batten is about 13 feet long, the chine logs are about 16 feet long, and the shear clamps will be 18 feet long. Now those will be cut down once they're installed on the boat, but I need that extra length to help me secure them in place initially. The longest lumber I have is 16 feet, so that'll work for the keel batten and chine logs, but for the shear clamps, I'm gonna have to mill down the lumber and then scarf joint two pieces together to get the required 18 feet.
Ellen, what are you doing? Are you out cold? Why are you so lazy, Alan? I could have used an extra hand. Here are the completed scarf joints on the shear clamps. They turned out really nice. The final length of these shear clamps is just about 20 feet. The plans call for 18 feet. I made them extra long because I want to be able to offset these scarf joints so I don't end up with a weak spot with them being directly across from each other on the boat. These are also roughed out to one inch thick. That way, in case I messed up the scarf, I'd have some room to work with. So now I'll plane them down to three quarters of an inch thick for their final dimensions. I also have the two chine logs milled down to their final dimensions. I also have the keel batten milled down to its final dimensions. But there's one operation I need to do on it before we're ready to start setting up the jig and starting installing pieces. I need to rough cut the bevels on the bottom of the keel batten. These bevels will be where the bottom of the keel batten meets the bottom of the boat. It's going to be approximately a 12 degree bevel and I'm planning to cut it on the table saw with some help. Here's the completed keel batten. The bevels are roughed in at 12 degrees. Once I get it installed on the boat, I'll fine tune the bevels to match the bottom frames. They vary from anywhere from about 12 degrees on up to 22 degrees, depending on each station. I'm gonna make this the end of part three of building a plywood snipe. Having completed the stem, transom, chine logs, and shear clamps, I'm ready to go on and start building the jig. I needed to make sure I completed these parts before building the jig because with the length of the shear clamps and chine logs, it would have been very difficult to build them once I have the jig completed in my small shop. I'm really excited to start constructing the jig in the next video because once I have that built, the boat is really gonna start to take shape rapidly. I hope you found this video entertaining and useful. Please don't forget to check the description for additional details and associate links for any tools, equipment, or supplies I used in this video. Thanks again for watching Make Stuff Nation. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.